We continue to preview the 2024 college football season, and our stop today is Valley, Alabama. It is a privilege to get to visit with Trevor Ziders, who is the head football coach for the Point Skyhawks. Coach, always nice to get to see you and to visit with you, and I, I've tracked you down today in your office there in Valley, and I know that you are a busy person. You have a lot going on. Uh, it's uh, I'm sure you had a busy, busy spring as well. It's still technically spring on the calendar. Tell us a little bit about yours. So it was it, one. I thought it was good. Uh, we had a couple coaches changes, um, and the biggest coaching change was our OC decided to to move on. Uh, so I had to replace that position. Um, promoted one of my my coaches that was already currently on staff. Um, so he's going to take over those reins. And just got hired a quarterbacks coach. Um, he started earlier this week, so uh, it's good to have Charlie Skolaski join our staff from West Virginia Wesleyan in, in West Virginia. Um, still have another hire or two to make, young guys, you know, but um, working through that process as, as we go and uh, just excited about what's upcoming. Uh, you know, we, we've got a great season ahead of us, um, challenging, daunting, but if we do the things we need to do, uh, we're excited about what what can come of it. We just know we've got a lot of challenges in front. Well, I and I do want to talk about that schedule that's ahead of you. We'll save that for just a little bit. <laughs> uh, you're in your third season now, and spring also brings the recruiting season, and I know that you had a lot of recruits that, that you're pleased with. Yeah, you know, we've got a good young crop that we're bringing in. Um, and the other side, what we've been able to do, we've been able to retain so with our retention, now we're building that those layers of depth in our program that you have to have to be successful. It's very, very tough to play this game of college football with a bunch of freshmen because they're 18, 19-year-old kids playing against 22, 23-year-old men. And I know people are like, oh, but it's still just a game. Yeah, but when they're at that differential in, in regards to body development, strength, and what they can see and do, that it, it's a major challenge. So we're very excited to bring those guys in and, and you know, hopefully they're going to grow, but we're hoping that we don't have to rely on them a ton and that they can learn. And hopefully we can redshirt some of those guys so that they have the opportunity to grow and get better as we continue to move forward. Um, and that, and that's the biggest thing with this recruiting class. It, it should provide some quality depth. Now we got a couple that I think will step in and compete quite quickly uh, but we'll have to see how that goes. Well, one of those things too, it, it, it's at a point now where you red shirt by choice and not because of the COVID year. So we're just about past that particular era and uh, you get to make those decisions all on your own. Coach, we look ahead to this season and, and last season, four and seven, it was a three and three start, a tough AAC schedule as it's going to be. And, you know, with the exception of the Reinhardt game and the Kentucky Christian game, which uh, a loss and a win, Everything else really, really tight through that conference portion of the schedule. Looking at your offense, you used a number of quarterbacks, but uh, probably the the biggest place that you're going to have to make some adjustments, you lose a lot of offensive production with Emory Bryant moving on. We, we really do. Emory, you know, ended up being a first-team All-American, all-purpose guy. Um, ended up with 1,500 total yards on the season, and that that's a lot of production that you're going to have to replace almost – a thousand yards receiving. I think he ended up with 978 and, you know, was one of our main guys that we had to get the ball to. Um, as the spring went on, I mean, that's one of the things we've had to try to identify a couple guys that we think uh, we're going to be able to get the ball to. And uh, that's one of the biggest things that we concentrated on. Um, we got a couple receivers that we think um, Kareem Key returns. Uh, he had a, a nice showing as a freshman. Um, they'll, he sustained a leg injury in spring, uh, but he should be back full speed, ready to go by fall. Um, then we have Sean Jones, who is a transfer from Jacksonville State, who um, was from right down the road in Opelika, Alabama. Um, and he, he provided some spark this spring, uh, especially if you get him the ball in space, he can go. Uh, then we got another receiver, a uh, young guy, Brandon Washington, he played on special teams last fall, but really didn't get a chance to play on the offense. Kid could be a real difference maker for us. And then uh, there's still one or two that we're talking to that, you know, depending on what we may still add through the portal yet, that that's really one of the things we're still looking to add through that portal is, 
you know, a difference maker out there. Um, that's kind of one of those positions. Then quarterbacks, you know, you you hit the nail on the head. We played multiple. And what's the old saying? If you if you have two, you don't have one. Well, you know, there's there's some truth to that, unfortunately. Um, we did bolster that position. We brought in a transfer from uh, University of North Alabama, young man by the name of Brayson Edwards. Um, and Brayson and Peyton Allen uh, battled for most of the spring. Um, <clears throat> and it's not that Mitch Gossett wouldn't have battled too, but Mitch was busy playing lacrosse. So, you know, <laughs> that, that was a, a little different challenge. Um, and then we have a, another young guy who ended up being a red shirt who um, within that needed shoulder surgery. And he will be coming back from that. And then we're adding three young guys. Now we are still looking to potentially add one more. Uh, we're talking to a potential grad transfer quarterback to even bolster the competition in that room. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really working through those guys because we got to find, if you don't have that guy, that's the one position where it sticks out more so than anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and we just want them to compete. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not worried if the, the best guy is going to play. So whoever that may be, that's going to be that guy. Um, then running back wise, we're very pleased with our running back room. Um, we've got multiple guys returning. Trey Inge is back. Deontay Eatman's back. Uh, Jace Grant, who played some as a freshman, is back. Uh, then we added um, Malik Pope. Uh, he is a also a transfer from North Alabama. Uh, really good young guy. I highly impressed with him in the spring. Um, he he definitely shows he has the tools to be a difference maker. Um, and then, believe it or not. Uh, we have an old guy kind of returning, Adam Sanders. Uh, this is his last opportunity, last go around. He wanted his fifth year, and and lo and behold, he, he's done everything he needs to do. So he's coming back for one last year, and uh, he's another one who can really do some things for us. And I'll tell you, we're adding a couple in this running back class that I think could really be special, but just have to, they haven't been here on campus yet, so I can't tell you for sure, but – at least from what I've seen out of them, they show some ability there. Um, offensive line, uh, we lost a couple up front, um, and we are returning two that have played for us and Sammy Williams and Sterling Caldwell, uh, and, and those two have been really good for us. Um, there are two other guys returning in, Dontavious King and Trey Gordy, um, but Trey ended up getting hurt right before spring ball with a, a – accident in the weight well it wasn't an accident it was an injury in the weight room and then so that kind of held him out of that but you know he he did well for us last fall and those guys coming back is only going to help bolster that old line and then we're bringing in about 15 young guys um so there there's going to be a lot of battles there this fall and they're we're excited about a couple of them but now it's just how do they mature how do they progress and how quickly they can pick it up because we're going to need to rely on a couple of them. And that's the one position you normally don't want freshmen. You, you, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, that's the one that it, it's the tricks of the trade and whatever that you learn through playing that. But, but, and we know that, but that's the one position where we've got to uh, improve quickly there. And then tight end Nick Marion is back. Uh, he was first team all conference. He's going to use his COVID year. Uh, this will be his last go around no matter what. Um, but uh, we're glad he's coming back because we expect him to be a difference maker for us. We didn't get him the ball nearly enough last year. And I don't know if it was our quarterbacks never saw him or <laughs> we just weren't trying to do enough with him. But but we've got to get him the ball more. All right. Uh, yeah, you got to find that tight end. <laughs> yes. So, um, it, it, and people miss him. They don't cover him. And he's got a speed element that a lot of people aren't prepared for, for with him. But uh, but those are the that's really the offense in a nutshell. I mean, we, we kind of think we know who who we're going to be able to rely on, but now can we get them the football, get them making plays and doing the things we need to do? We're visiting now with Coach Trevor Ziders from Point and Coach. I, I appreciate you taking us through that offense and we look at the defensive side of the ball. Kamari and Larkin uh, led the team in tackles by a large margin. More than 100 tackles last year, led in tackles for loss, 17 and a half of those, nine sacks on the season from the linebacker spot. That's a that's a promising player coming back for you. Key had a heck of a year. Um, you know, I, I actually, in my own personal opinion, I th thought Key got robbed. I thought he should have been an All-American. 
uh, with the way he produced. But uh, unfortunately, that went against him. But hardworking kid, one of the hardest workers I've got, um, has made immense strides in regards to his growth and maturity in his couple years that he's been here. And, and that's just a testament to who he is as a person. And as he's continued to grow, his play has gotten better every year. Um, and the nice part is we've got multiple levels of the defense where we've got somebody who came to play each and every Saturday. Um, he's just the tip of the iceberg because like you said, he led in pretty much everything. Um, but joining him will be Ethan Benz, who was second team all conference as a sophomore. Still have Ethan for two more years. His growth should help immensely. Uh, we've got Caleb Wade, who was a first team all conference safety as a sophomore. He still got a couple years. He's going to be big for us. Um, and then up front, Cortez Thomas comes back. And Cortez was a, a force up front for a lot of teams to have to deal with as a defensive end. But we also didn't lose much. Um, James Bryan is back. He was a starting D tackle for us. Cassidy Deans is back. He was a starting D lineman for us. Uh, we added depth. Um, a guy who played for us two years ago, Gabe Donnelly, was hurt last fall. Couldn't play because of a foot injury, had to have surgery. He's now back, but he's healthy. Um, so we're adding that. Promise Williams, who was a, who's going to be a senior and another one of those guys using his COVID year along with James. Um, Promise had an injury that he sustained the end of last spring, unfortunately tore a pectoral muscle. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't bench press. Uh, you know, we were finishing up, but he tore a pec. And, but he's going to be back. So we've added some pop-up front that should only help Cortez or one of those other guys thrive a little bit more. Um, and we're, we're still trying to find exactly the right combination of who that other edge guy could be. Then linebacker wise, like I said, I've got key, I've got Ethan. I'm pretty pleased right now with where I'm headed in that aspect. We got a couple others and then secondary wise, I already highlighted Caleb, but we've got care Thomas who's coming back. Who's a senior. Um, and he's played a lot in his three years. He's he's going to be a, a senior corner for us, and I think he's going to bring a lot to the table. Um, we've got a couple of young guys that no one's really found out about yet that I think they're going to be some ball players. one by the name of Jakari Nobles. Um, and then Dylan Carden, I think he kind of gets overlooked sometimes uh, because of his size and stature, but the kid just finds ways to make plays. Um, and then the other position – we got a couple young guys right now that are battling for that one corner that was because we, we lost Davion Dukes and Shaquan Bickley. We lost out of our secondary that were seniors that, that played a lot. And Bickley was a starting corner. Davion was a starting safety. But, you know, but there's some guys there that are going to replace them that I think can get the job done quite quickly and quite well. And that's the, the difference on the defensive side of the ball is the fact that we've done the same stuff now for going into year five. Now it's these guys have developed and they've learned and it's a lot easier for them to just step in and play. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we're, we really have now on defense. They've learned it. Now it's okay. Continue to step up and, and work with what we've got. So we're very excited about the defense. It's just going to be, and we kind of talk about it a lot on the defensive side of the football. Who's going to carry the mantle next? Like, you know, who, who's stepping up now? Cause we, we move, had move on. Who's the next guy in line? And that's one thing defensively we've had here since I got here. Um, we've had multiple uh, all-conference, all-American, you name it. On the defensive side of the football, we've been very stout. And, and that's the one thing that we got to keep. Um, and then as we continue to move through that, that'll help out our offense and our special teams because the better the defense is, it helps it all out. I understand. You mentioned special teams, too. You have a kicker coming back in Matthew Moses. Missed just one extra point throughout the season last year. Uh, he's someone that at least uh, you'll have in camp and uh, maybe some more. Yeah, so Matt returns, which is good. I mean, he brings a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience to it, so he's not afraid or gun-shy anymore. That's one thing with bringing in young guys. You never know how they're going to kick that first Saturday they're out there. Um, <laughs> so, you know, at least with Matt, we, we know what we're getting. He's a competitor. He wants guys to come in and compete with him. Um, so we're excited about that. And we are bringing in a couple guys that will compete with him. Um, we got a young man, Logan Wanzalak, coming out of uh, uh, the St. Augustine area in Florida. Uh, strong leg um, and, and 
seems to do very, very well with what he's doing. So we hope that he can continue that once he gets here. Um, then we have, that's Logan. Then we have uh, Daniel Neary or Neary. I'm not, the last name's still a little, I, I'm still trying to figure that one out yet, but he's from East Forsyth in Georgia and uh, another kid with a good leg, good pedigree. Uh, we have a punter coming from Harris County, Christian Tomeo, who's not going to be bad. Um, he's going to need probably a year to, to build that leg strength, but it's going to be good to see him doing some kicking. And then um, we're talking about adding one more, but we also have our long snapper back. Uh, Garrett Marson returns, and that's a nice step to have because now we're not necessarily trying to find one. Um, we, we should have one, but we are adding multiple that do more than one position. Uh, Peyton Chastain, I know, is coming in as a tight end, but he can also long snap. And there's a couple others like that. So that's a, a nice issue to have because the more competition, the better off we're going to be. And then the return game is where we're going to have to find a couple. But uh, Jordan Green out of Rutland High School down in the Macon area is coming in. We expect him to be a potential guy that could do both for us. Uh, Jalen Watts out of Douglas County. He's a wide receiver. We think he can do both. And there's some other guys in the secondary and whatnot that we think have that ability. So now it's just a matter of, of finding who our, our best returners are going to be um, with a little bit of that speed element so that we can crack one or two. I mean, Emory took at least – Emory had a, a touchdown on kickoff return and I think one on punt return. And, and we've got to continue to get better with that. But, you know, the, anytime you can take a kick back in the kicking game, you're doing well. So – Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it can be a game changer. It, it really can. Well, you, you definitely want to have a game changer or two, especially with the opening to your schedule and coach it's yeah. uh, I don't, I don't know who put the schedule together. So I'll, I'll just say whoever it was, man, that uh, it's going to be fun to get things started. Kind of a week zero, August 31st, you have Bethel, you're at Bethel and then uh, at home against Lindsay Wilson the next weekend FCS opponent in Davidson the weekend following that, Division II opponent in Allen following that on the road at Davidson and Allen. And then, of course, we talked earlier, it's a tough AAC schedule. So it, it's going to be daunting. It, it's going to be a challenge. Um, you know. But as I tell our kids all the time, the, the most exciting part about it is, number one, I shouldn't have to work on you getting excited to play a college football game. <laughs> I mean, when, you get, when you're coming out and you're playing a top 10, top 15 team in the country – Starting off with Bethel, you know, Coach Jasper is going to have his boys ready to go, and, and, and they are always a very talented football team. Um, that is going to be a challenge for us, and we know it, but we're excited about it. I mean, that game last year, the, the score doesn't reflect it. We were down 24-13 with 11 minutes left to go in the fourth. Problem is we threw back-to-back -back pick sixes, and all of a sudden that 14-point swing just, you know, it, it made that game look not nearly as close as it was. Um then we're going to draw Lindsey Wilson, and and that's another one that, you know, we're going to have to to make some some hay there, and and they're going to be another good football team. Uh, but we we've got to come to play. We did not go up there, and we to me we did not have the showing that I wanted us to have up there. Um, we came out flat, and and it showed. Um, that's the best thing I know, and and I take full responsibility for that because it's my job to get them up emotionally. But at the same time, we we came out flat. Uh, and then FCS Davidson, um, we're going to be, I think, the second game in their brand new stadium. I mean, I don't see how you can't be excited about that. It's it, exactly. what I kind of told the guys was it might be the home that Steph Curry built because without Steph Curry, I don't even know that they have it. But, you know, uh, we're, so we're going to get an opportunity to go play an FCS level opponent. And these guys talk about, hey, you know, I was recruited by such. A, OK, well, let's go show it now. If that's what you really if you were that level, let's go show it. Let's go compete against these guys. And then Allen mm -hmm. is another, you know, a D2 school, another opportunity that we felt we wanted to take and, and challenge our guys. And that's the thing, because at the end of the day, it is a challenge. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to challenge ourselves because, as I tell people all the time, if we win those games, that's a, a national level type game that we're going to have. If we make the playoffs, those are the teams we're going to be playing anyway. Mm -hmm. So at least if we go and, and we show well or we win, now we know what we're doing and we know that we're going to be prepared for the postseason should we get there. Mm -hmm. But if we don't prepare properly, we don't do the things we need to do, it's going to be really hard. 
So those are some of the little things that that I am pleased with uh, in that regard. Then, really, we get into AAC play. I mean, we we play Faulkner again, which dropped a tough one there last year, 24-21. Thought we had a lot of opportunities to win that game. Uh, just made some bad mistakes. Um, then we play Kentucky Christian at home. Um, and hopefully that that's – I mean, they're going to be a much more improved. This is going to be Coach Aubrey's second year there. So we know that that's going to be a little bit more challenging. Then um, – I'm not sure if it's Reinhardt first or St. Andrews, but then we're on the road back-to-back weeks. Um, both of those are going to be challenging. St. Andrews is getting better every week. Um, and Coach Curtin's done a nice job there. And Coach Miller is going to have Reinhardt be Reinhardt. Um, and we know that. And it, it's funny because people are always saying that Reinhardt should be our, our main rival. And I'm like, well, we actually got to beat them to make it a rivalry. I mean, we, we got somehow we got to get off the schneid because we haven't beaten them at all. Um, so, uh, that's something that we've got to, that's going to be a great undertaking. Then, um, we come back home after a bye week and we play union or Pikeville first Pikeville. That was a great game there last year. We were winning in the fourth quarter and again, turnovers hurt us. We threw a pick six, they tied it 20, um, or no, we, we threw a pick. They went down, scored and tied it, made it 24, 24 next possession. We throw a pick six and all of a sudden that 14 point swing just, you know, swung that door the other way. And they ended up beating us. I think it was 38, 31 was the final in that one. And, you know, it was just, we didn't protect the ball well enough. So that was a frustration. Then union union is probably the game that sticks with me more than any other, because we had five turnovers and 18 penalties in that game. And we still had every opportunity to lose or to win that game, even though we lost it 20 to 14 and we had a pick six, we had a turnover inside our 30. That was 14 points. If we don't even do those things, we're in great shape. But it's those little things that, you know, we've got to protect the ball better and, and whatnot. And then lastly, we finish up at Bluefield, and that's going to be a battle. I, I mean, Coach Lusk always has those guys ready to go. Um, they've got a quarterback coming back that's going to throw the ball all over the place. So, you know, as we tell our guys, it's a great opportunity if you're in the secondary or D-line to get picks and, and sacks. But at the same time, we've got to be ready to uh, go against those guys. And, and being in November in northern weather, that's the one thing that worries me because sometimes our, our Georgia boys, they don't like cold weather. That, that's not, you know, in, in Bluefield, West Virginia, Virginia, right on that border, it could be snowing that time of year. So I don't even know what we're going to get that game yet. It should be fun, but we look we look forward to that. I'm already I'm already looking forward to that one near the end of the schedule. That should be fun. All of them, coach, should be exciting. And and but we're going to be following the Skyhawks this year as we did last year, and we look forward to to seeing how you do, Coach Trevor Ziders. Thank you so much for taking time with us today, and I learned a a lot about your your team this year, and uh, look forward to getting to see them on the field. We appreciate you being with us here on the summit today. Well, and we really appreciate you having us. It, it's great to be able to talk about our university and our football program and what we're able to try to do here. So I really appreciate you and all your time. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.